This video is brought to you by Simple Mobile, where your phone is an extension of your own personal freedom. If you want to sign up for Simple Mobile, it's super simple. All you need is a GSM phone, then you just need to purchase a Simple Mobile SIM card and activate one of their Simple Mobile Unlimited plans, and that is it. If you would like to find out more information about Simple Mobile, you can click on the annotation right here. Hey, what is up guys, BoHD here, and after tediously waiting for an invite, I have finally got my hands on the OnePlus One. I've been testing it out for the past couple of weeks now, and I gotta say, I love this phone. First of all, the hardware is next level good. This is the sandstone black version of the OnePlus One, meaning the entire back of the phone and edges have a sandpaper textured coating that really feels great in the hands. It's not rough enough to sand a wood sculpture or anything like that, but it does provide a good amount of grip. And considering I've never held a device with a material like this before, I'm actually blown away by how effective it is at being both functional and stylish. I really hope more devices feature sandstone back covers in the future. But as for the rest of the device, you'll find the power sleep on off button on the right hand side, the volume up and down controls on the left hand side, the 3.5mm headphone jack up top, and the micro USB charging port down below at the bottom next to the dual stereo speakers. The front of the device is one of my favorite areas as it is very sleek and plain. There's really not a whole lot of stuff going on here, except that you will find the 5 megapixel front facing camera and capacitive touch buttons below for the home, back, and menu commands that can be turned on or off depending on whether or not you like software or physical touch buttons. And then if you flip the phone on its back, we'll find the 13 megapixel rear facing camera with a dual LED flash with the Cyanogen mod and OnePlus One logos on the back cover that can be removed and swapped out for other designs that should be released fairly soon by OnePlus. So that's pretty awesome, although you can't really swap out the battery. For whatever reason, it is glued to the back, so that's a slight disappointment there. Now as for that display, when you power it on, it looks great. It features a 1080p 5.5 inch LCD display, and while it's not a 2K UHD panel that we've seen on the LG G3, and Oppo Find 7, it still looks incredible and I'm willing to bet you probably couldn't tell the difference between it and a 2K res panel, especially since whites are white and the colors are very accurate, they are not too oversaturated or vibrant, it's just right, especially thanks to the new update which tweaked the display to make it more color accurate. Some people mentioned their OnePlus One has a yellowing to it, but mine seems to be perfectly fine so hopefully that's just an isolated issue. The software on the OnePlus One, however, is one of the most unique features of the phone as it runs a custom version of CyanogenMod 11S, which is basically stock Android with more customizable features. In this OS, you can pretty much customize whatever you'd like. You can make your phone look like a Galaxy S5 running TouchWiz, or a device that looks like Android L, or even an LG G2. There's just a ton of themes that can completely change the look and feel of your device, and they're also pretty cheap, I mean they only cost a few dollars at most. And on top of that, you can customize areas of your phone where you normally wouldn't be able to, such as being able to add or remove software navigation buttons, and to customize the quick settings drawer on the notification tray. There are even gestures you can control that are built into the operating system that allow you to activate various commands, such as being able to draw a V to activate the flashlight, and a circle to activate the camera app. There's just really a lot you can customize on this device, which is why it's so great. I mean, it takes stock Android to a whole new level in a lot of ways. And actually, I think the best thing about CyanogenMod is that it performs as well as stock Android in terms of performance. I mean, this phone flies, and I mean flies. It's rocking a Snapdragon 801 quad-core processor with 3GB of RAM and an Adreno 330 GPU. And I'm just going to say it, this is the fastest phone I have ever used. I can navigate this phone extremely quickly without getting much stuttering at all, and I'm just really impressed with how well it is performing, especially since it technically isn't running stock Android. And thanks to that new update to Android 4.4.4 KitKat, the call quality and speakerphone is much improved, I mean both parties can hear me well, but with a lot of budget phones nowadays, you tend to find that the phone manufacturers cut corners in certain areas to try and get the price to be as low as possible. I mean, usually it's the camera that takes the biggest hit, but on the OnePlus One, that doesn't seem to be the case here either. It has a 13 megapixel camera sensor that is capable of shooting 4K, and while it's not the absolute best smartphone camera on the market, 
it certainly is a great sensor as you can see i mean the amount of detail in each shot really is impressive i actually took a picture of my food the other day and when i reviewed the image later i was just blown away by how great of a picture it was i mean it almost looked like it came from a dslr and i mentioned it does shoot 4k video and it also does a pretty good job in this department as well it actually has two 4K modes, that being 4K UHD, which is the standard 4K option on most 4K recording devices. But then there's also a 4K DCI setting, which is basically a cinematic mode that shoots 4K at 24 frames per second. But both modes deliver great results. I mean, as you can see, the detail is incredible now, and this video isn't even exported in 4K, so you can only imagine it gets better and more crisp. And so overall, I'm just very pleased with the camera on the OnePlus One. I'm also very pleased with the battery life on the OnePlus One. Now it features a 3100 milliamp battery, and over the past couple of weeks, I could easily squeeze out a full day of heavy use out of this phone, sometimes even two. However, that was when I was running Android 4.4.2 KitKat, because as of recording this video, the OnePlus One updated to Android 4.4.4 KitKat, and battery life has suffered a lot more, so I'm hoping it will be fixed in a future update, which I'm sure it will because CyanogenMod is constantly updating this device. So that's kind of a disappointment, but I'm sure it will get updated in no time so that it will be able to last at least one or two days of heavy usage. Another area of the phone that I want to highlight is the speaker. The OnePlus One is rocking dual stereo speakers, and in my opinion, they sound pretty good considering they are at the bottom of the phone, I mean, they're no M8 speakers, that's for sure, but they really aren't bad, and I'd say that they definitely should allow you to listen to YouTube videos effectively. So if you're wondering about the overall quality of the speakers, wonder no longer, because I think they'll be able to satisfy you just fine. So to conclude my review of the OnePlus One, I can say so far, this is one of my favorite devices of the year. I'm a huge fan of stock Android, and CyanogenMod just gives me the same speed and fluidity stock Android offers, but with even more customizable options. And the back cover on the OnePlus One is very unusual, but it's very pleasant. It's actually very surprisingly pleasant to hold in the hands. I've never actually held a device with sandpaper as one of their building materials, but it really works well on this device. I think really the only problem I've had with this phone is that it's pretty big in the hands. I would have liked to have seen them slim down the bezels a little bit and maybe remove the capacitive touch buttons down below since they kind of just take up unnecessary space. And also it's very hard to actually get your hands on one of these devices. I mean, the marketing team did a terrible job marketing their invite only system. I mean, they originally wanted you to actually smash your old phone and send it to them to get a OnePlus One. And then just recently they had a sort of sexist ladies first campaign that made it so that women had to plaster the OnePlus One logos on their body for people to vote on the most attractive picture. I mean, both of those invite contests I mentioned were canceled, but that just goes to show you how terrible their marketing team is. But you know, if you do want an update, I occasionally have a couple here and there that I give away on Twitter. So if you want a chance to get one, make sure you follow me on Twitter at BowHD. It's probably the best way for you to be notified of whether or not I'm actually giving away invites. But currently I don't have any right now, but I might in the future. So just make sure you're following me there just in case you will get a chance to win one if you don't have one already. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to click that subscribe button right down here so you can stay up to date with all of my latest tech videos. But with that said, that's gonna about do it for this video, guys. If you wanna take a look at my most recent videos, you can do so right here. But as always, I'm BoHD from How To and More. Thanks for watching.